I'm running this LED matrix display from a Raspberry Pi over here. I'm taking from the ribbon cable from the LED matrix display, just jump a wire straight into the GPO pins of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm using Python to run this, and Python seems to be able to run the display this size pretty well. If you get any bigger uh, display, then probably you need to go to C to, to get a bit more speed. Um, but what I'll do is I'll go over the Python code in this video and also how I've wired from the Raspberry Pi to the LED matrix board. So on the back of the LED matrix board, there's two connectors. Uh, the first one on this side is a power connector. It just takes five volts in ground. Uh, and then the ribbon cable comes out there and you can connect that straight to the GPIO pins. Um, it's only logic levels and, and they only go from ground up to, uh, usually I think it's probably 5.5, but 3.3 volts drives them fine. Uh, it doesn't have any, any issues with that. So at the top of the reading file in the source code that I've put on GitHub, um, I've got a crude example of what the connector looks like. Uh, and each of these pins uh, can go directly to a GPI pin on the Raspberry Pi, uh, and the, gr the ground pins go to zero volts on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and the Raspberry Pi just outputs to these pins. And these pins can accept up to five volts, but 3.3 volts will drive these pins fine. Um, so the display itself is divided into the top half and the bottom half. And the top half of the display, you define the color on these pins R1, G1, and B1. And the bottom half of the display, you define the colors on R2, G2, and B2. So as these pins on the connector go up here. Um, but you actually uh, address the, the LEDs in the top half of the display using A, B, C, and D as, as, as like a uh, binary number. So from these pins, A, B, C, and D, and also E. But E is for if you have a 64 pixel display, 64 high pixel, but mine's 32 pixels high. So I only need uh, A, B, C, and D uh, to, to address um, which LED I'm, I'm actually addressing up uh, vertically. Uh, and then you shift the the data from these um, red, green, and blue definitions. So you put your data on there and you shift the data across with each clock pulse onto the next LED along each row. And you just fill up the display like that. But I'll go through the Python code and, and you'll see in Python code how, it, how it's done. So there are two files of interest in the actual source code. Uh, one of them is just a shell script, which is this uh, shell script here. And it just starts the Python code and the reason why I've got this shell script is I use this Linux command nice and what that does is it sets the priority of this task that I'm starting which is the Python code as a, as the high, highest priority it can it can get uh, and that although it's not needed I, the, the 32 by 64 display runs just fine without this but I, I've not actually had a 64 by 64 display so I haven't tried that with the source code uh, but if there were any issues, contentions with the amount of speed it takes to display 64 by 64, then this would help it out by uh, making it high priority in Linux. As is usually the case with um, source code, it actually doesn't take much uh, Python code to actually drive this display. So I'll quickly go through the, the source code. At the top, I've got a definition of which of the pins on the connector for the display I've assigned with which pin on the, on the uh, Raspberry Pi GPIO. Uh, that's just to make it more readable uh, as we go through. And then display properties. So I've set, when I'm defining my data, on, I'm going to load in some images to display on the display. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll animate through those images. And in those images, because those images could be multiple colors, and I've only got eight colors to d deal with on the, uh, on the actual LED display, I've defined red, green, and blue as colors which I'm going to convert from the image into the, the data which I'm going to display on the, on the, on the actual display itself. Uh, I've got a frame repeat. This is to adjust the, um, the animation speed uh, so that it can animate at a reasonable speed. Uh, then display frames, I've got four images which I'm going to load in to animate. So that, that's what this four, number four on the display frames is. Uh, and then the columns, this is actual physical LED display itself. So I've got 64 by 32 display. And you can get these, like I say, in the 64 by 64, uh, but I haven't tried those yet. So uh, I don't have one to actually try this code on, but the, the code should 
work with a little bit of uh, modification for a 64 by 64 display. I'm using Pygame uh, to load in the images because Pygame makes it nice and easy to load in images and then read pixel by pixel the images. Uh, then I just set up the GPIO pins all for output because we're outputting from the GPIO on all of the pins uh, and they're all by default low except for this very last one output enable uh, because output enable is active low so initially I set the output enable of that pin to high uh, so that the output isn't being held high uh, held on all the time uh, and then I come down so this is by game makes it nice and easy to load images so I'm loading each of my four images and as you've seen uh, in the at the start of the video, it's the Pac-Man and Ghost. Uh, I've got four frames which I'm going to animate. I'm going to animate them first in the forward direction, then I'll, I'll animate them in the re reverse direction, and that makes the animation a bit smoother. Just as an example, because I can't be bothered to do too much more than that. Um, and then what I do is from the the images which I've just loaded with Pygame, I've got to convert those into display frames which I'm going to send on to the um, on the actual display itself. Now I've made my life a bit easier because the, the, these images which I've actually uh, produced, which I'm loaded in up there, I've made them 64 by, 64 by 32 pixels exactly. Uh, so that makes it nice and easy just to go through and uh, create uh, create the um, data array which I'm gonna actually display, uh, display. So if I put all the data into a data array first, when it comes to actually updating the display, it's really quick because you just read directly out of the the, the data tray what you've pre prepared earlier and you don't have to do any process on processing on it later so I do all the processing at this point when I'm loading the stuff up so first of all I just define at the very top level uh, each frame so each frame will be each of these images uh, and then to each of those images I put in the rows display rows of pixels uh, and then to each of those rows I put a columns and you'll see when I come to actually refer to this, uh, how it's an array of an array of an array of an array sort of thing. But when, when I actually come to refer to it, it's nice and easy because all I have to do is specify the frame, the row, the column, uh, and then the color, the color value. So you can actually uh, use Pygame to actually um, read here the pixels at a particular point, so column and row. So Pygame actually allows you to get back color, color information from a image by specifying the column and row you want the color to come back from, so a well, pixel, and I put that into color value. Uh, and then what I've uh, done is I've um, placed that color value directly into my data away. So here you see that I'm referring to it as frame, row, and column, and I'm putting the color value for red, green, and blue in, into there. So now that I've loaded up, all the, those images into my data array and it's there ready for me just to get the whatever value I want just by referring to an index in there I come into the loop of actually updating the display uh, so I'm going to do an infinite loop just going to let it animate forever uh, and when I'm going through the animation uh, first of all I, I decide which frame I want to get as part of the animation so I'm going to animate this is the part where I'm actually deciding getting the next frame and the next frame next frame so this frame repeat like I say it it, it controls the rate at which the animation uh, runs so I don't change the frame that I'm actually displaying for frame repeat number of frames I think it was about five frames or something so I display the same frame so I reduce that each time five times before I come in and change which frame I'm going to do and I change the frame in the in the frame direction so frame direction at first is one so I'm adding one to frame so I'm going forward through the animation and then if frame is out of the either too low or too high then I change the direction of the frame by multiplying by minus one so multiplying by minus one would make it from one to minus one or if it was minus one it'd make it back to one again so it just changes the direction of in which I'm animating so I'm just selecting the frame that I want by doing that uh, and then, so this is where we actually do the hardware, the actual updating of the LED matrix. Um, so because, like I say, you, the, the display is defined as a top half and the bottom half, so I'm only having to go through, when I'm going through the rows, I'm only having to go through half the actual rows on the display. Uh, and at the very top, I, I 
decide which row I'm, uh, I'm addressing on the output pins, which row I'm going to define from 0 to 15. I've left uh, this extra one in there uh, for 64-bit display. It's commented out at the minute. I haven't used that yet. And there's a special thing, uh, an adjustment I have to do for actually displaying. When I, was, when I ran it first time, it displayed one line out, out of sync for some reason. So I've got this little bit of code just to fiddle that. Um, so, but all this does is shift the, the graphic image up one, one line on the displays. It's just necessary to do that. Uh, so I've, I've decided which row I'm doing. So now I'll go through, through each of the columns. And in each of the columns, I've got the red, green, and blue definitions. I'm outputting those onto the pins for R1, G1, and B1. So that's for the upper part of the display. And then if the selected row plus 16 of the actual image data goes onto the bottom half of the display, R2, G2, and B2. So that's defined a pixel for the top and bottom. All you have to do then is uh, clock it into the display using this setting clock high and clock low. But I've also got here output enable low and output enable high. So I can actually um, display what's currently in the output buffer whilst I'm um, clocking a new piece of the pixel of data into the input buffer. So because the actual display has an input buffer and an output buffer, the output buffer is what gets displayed on the screen. So you can display that whilst you're clocking stuff into the input buffer. And that keeps your fret, your refresh rate on the LEDs up. And that makes the display nice and quick um, quick and flicker free. Um, so that's a, a nice little trick there, rather than clocking data in and then, and then just outputting it to the display. You can output, you can update the line of the display each time you clock a pixel in. And then after, you've, after I've done that, so I'm coming out of a for loop here. So I've come out of the column loop um, so I've got a clocked in a row of pixels, a new row of pixels, and what this does is it clocks it from the input buffer to the output buffer. So that that row then can can be displayed on the display as an entire row, and that's all the code there is. So it just iterates through each of the row on the displays and clocks the data in, and whilst it's clocking the data in, it's updating the refresh rate of each line that it's going as well on the output that it's updating is the old output whilst you're clocking in the new output. So it's a little bit a little bit hard to get your head around. Uh, but it's it's such a small piece of code and it's so simple it, it won't take you long to, to get used to it if you just read it for it a few times.